For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome guitars. This season I'm going to be going more in depth showing you some of the partial builds and behind the scenes stuff that I've never shown before. I'll also be answering some of your questions that I've been receiving in the comments below these videos. Of course I'll be refinishing, refretting, rewiring, whatever it takes to turn these guitars into some real shred machines. This is Trash to Thrash. Hello everybody, welcome back to Trash to Thrash. I'm your host, Mark Murray. And if you're watching this episode the week that it came out, then you know this week was the week of Valentine's Day. So today I'm gonna tell you the story about a former love of mine, this Epiphone Les Paul. This is a guitar that I bought when I was 16 years old and it came modded with the EMG HZ pickups already. At the time, I was in a screamo band. It was 2003, give me a break. And we actually changed tunings quite a bit for our music. So I needed guitars that had more stable bridges than the ones I use these days. So I was basically playing Les Pauls and Strats. Many of you will recognize this guitar as one of the Crackle Les Pauls that I recently built. This is actually the Ice Les Paul. But years before I had the Crackle paint job, I was jamming out with this thing up on stage. This was right before I bought my first Jackson Rhodes and my Gibson Flying V. After I got the Flying Vs, I put this guitar away for a while. Eventually, I removed all the stickers off it, I cleaned it up, and it became one of my experimenting guitars when I had my old company, Pickuptronics. And it was a business where we would sell guitar pickups, pre-wired pick guards, do guitar mods for local customers, all kinds of stuff. Now, after starting Guitar Guts and Trash to Thrash, this guitar became my experimenting guitar once again. You could see me testing out my airbrushing on it before I did the Hellspawn guitar here but I got this crazy idea for it. I had picked up another one of these Les Pauls and thought about cutting them both together and combining them into one guitar. I was going to make one neck a standard six string and the other some type of one string death machine tuned an octave lower than the lowest note of the six string neck. I came up with that idea, but I just got so busy with customer guitars that I had to set the Les Pauls aside. Actually, a couple years went by and eventually I needed a couple guitars to test some new paint concepts on. So I used these two Les Pauls, and I really liked the results. When I started these two guitars, I had no intentions of actually completing them, but after experimenting on them, I really liked how they looked, so I had to finish them. Both of these guitars taught me some new tricks and lessons, so that's what we're going to be focusing on this episode. We're going to head out to the spray booth, and then I'm going to show you guys what I've learned on these two guitars. As I mentioned before, I had been doing some experimenting on this guitar already, so you can see that it already had some crackle paint applied to it before, but it's all been sanded back down level, and it's ready for some new color. For this guitar, I decided to try a burst of two colors I've never tried before, green to blue. I actually had a dream that my friend gave me a guitar that was these colors, so I woke up and added it to my list of potential concepts to try out. To get nice big crackling when you do a crackle paint job, you really want to put on at least three coats of base color. This is the painting schedule that I typically follow anytime I do a crackle paint job, as recommended by Montana on their crackle paint cans. It's recommended that you do at least three coats of base color. You want to separate your base coats by 10 minutes at least, so you could start at noon, do your second coat around 12.10, and do your third coat around 12.20. For this paint job, since I was airbrushing on a burst, the last coat took me a little longer, so usually it just takes a minute or two to paint a guitar's body. But you can see that coat three took about 10 minutes because I was airbrushing and it was a lot slower than just spraying a guitar. This was only the second time I had ever used an airbrush to make a burst on a guitar. The black and red burst on the other Les Paul that I showed earlier was the first time, and the Hellspawn was actually the third time. By the second time, I felt confident enough to just go for it. When you're spraying crackle over a burst like this, you don't have to spend a lot of time getting your burst perfect on the first two base coats. It's mainly your third base coat that's gonna be coming through the crackle. But you still do wanna get some bursting going on on the first and second coat, because all these fresh layers of paint will be reacting to the crackle paint, so they will kinda of come through. The airbrush is pretty nice for the burst. It gives you a lot of control and it's pretty easy to do, but you still do get a lot of overspray. I don't have a ton of experience with the airbrush yet, so maybe that's just my settings. If you guys have airbrush tips for me, or some links to some great videos showing how to do some cool airbrushing, leave them in the comments down below. After you finish your final base coat, set an alarm for 45 minutes. That's gonna be how long you wanna wait before you put your crackle paint on. Like I said, with this guitar, I was experimenting. I really wasn't planning on finishing and building this into a full-on guitar, so after spraying my crackle paint, I applied some air to the crackle. I've heard that when you apply air to crackle, it's going to make it dry faster and crack bigger, so we're trying things out here. 
and it did seem like it gave me some good results. These are some pretty nice big cracks. After spraying the crack wall, I let the guitar dry for at least a week always. When I painted the Ice Les Paul, I knew that I had a satin crackle paint job coming up. It was actually the Washburn Solar Flying V. So this was my guitar that was kind of the test to throw some satin clear over a crackle paint job since I had never done that before. The best aerosol satin clear coat that I've found so far is made by Diamond, and it's in the Amazon links down below. But here in this video, I was actually using Rust-Oleum's 2X satin clear coat, and I found that the Diamond was much thicker and much nicer. Hey guys, we have a new way to help support the show. Down in the descriptions below, I now have a bunch of links to some Amazon products that I use all the time. I'm gonna try to add everything I use, tools, materials, onto this list, and then you can click through, buy the exact same things I'm using, and it helps benefit guitar guts and trash to thrash. Every time you purchase something, Amazon cuts a little bit out of their own profit and slides it over to me, so you guys don't get charged anything extra, but Amazon rewards me for bringing you to them. When you use the links down below and you get to Amazon, anything else you purchase that isn't on my list, I'll actually get a little bit of credit for too. So anytime you wanna help support Guitar Guts, try to keep that in mind. Instead of going directly to amazon.com, you can go through the links down in the description below and that'll help benefit the channel. If you wanna help a ton and you guys use Amazon a lot, then go down there, click the link and mark that as your Amazon homepage. So every time, instead of going to Amazon, you go to my links, and then anything you guys buy on Amazon will credit Guitar Guts, and like I said, it doesn't cost you guys anything more. So go use those links, I appreciate it a lot, and let's get back to the episode. If you've seen this show, you know I love a matched headstock, so of course, I'm painting this one to match, with the burst and the crackle. At first, I wasn't taking this guitar seriously, like I said, because it was just a test, I wasn't planning on fully assembling it, but after seeing the paint job, I knew I had to. So now I'm going back and I'm filling the original holes for the tuners. If I'm going to build this into a nicer guitar, I've got to replace the tuners and the ones I've got picked out don't match the original holes. Normally of course I would do this before painting it, but it's still doable. To fill the old holes, I'm dipping these toothpicks into some wood glue and putting them in the holes. Now I'm using a damp towel to remove the excess glue and some flush cutters to cut the toothpicks off. They're still a little bit sticking up from the toothpicks, so I'm using this chisel blade on an X-Acto knife to get it perfectly flat. If the blade is sharp, this will do a really good job. Next, I applied a little bit of wood filler to make sure that these holes are gonna be absolutely perfect. I actually prefer Bondo to do this now. I was using wood filler at the time, but either one works good. Some of these products say it's sandable within 15 minutes or within a couple hours, but I usually like to let this stuff settle and dry for at least a day or two. Then I came back to it and sanded it level with some 600 grit sandpaper. Now it's feeling super smooth and super good. At this point, I also cut out a vinyl stencil using my vinyl cutter with the Guitar Guts logo that I'm gonna be putting on the headstock of this guitar. I mixed the blue and the green together that I used on the body for the logo on the headstock. It actually created somewhat of a teal color, which looked really cool. After that dried, I went back into the paint booth with the neck and sprayed the back of the headstock white. Notice here the fretboard's taped off because obviously I don't want to paint the fretboard white. But after letting it dry, I removed the tape from the sides of the fretboard because I do want the clear to cover over to the edge. If I didn't do that, you'd actually feel the line where the paint ends, and I want that line to be seamless. I don't want to feel the edge of the paint on the side of the neck. After everything was dry, I handed it back to my assistant Ryan, who started to reassemble the guitar by installing the tuners and the bridge bushings. With this guitar, I wanted to do something interesting with the hardware. I didn't want chrome, I didn't want black, and I didn't want gold. And that seems to be what most guitars have, one of those three choices. After thinking hard and looking at a lot of different products, I found this really cool aged copper hardware made by a company called Geiker. I got a set of their locking tuners, the output jack plate, the neck plate, and the bridge. I ordered a set of knobs and they just never showed up. They went missing and then all of a sudden they were out of stock, so I couldn't get another set. I came up with an idea that actually looks really cool, so you'll see that at the end of the episode. What do you think of this hardware finish? I think it's really cool. Let me know down in the comments what you would have done with this guitar. Black, gold, chrome, copper, something else? Now it's almost ready to wire up, but I need to add a hole for a kill switch. Like I keep saying, I wasn't planning on making this into a finished guitar, so now it needs a kill switch, right? 
I want to take a moment now in the middle of the show to say thanks so much for watching, and if you want to help support Guitar Guts and Trash to Thrash, there's a few ways you can do that. Number one, share this show. Take a screenshot of the show and share it on your social media. Tell your friends, go check out Guitar Guts and Trash to Thrash at guitarguts.tv. Tell people about the show. It really helps me out. Number two is to join the Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you could join the Patreon page and get ad-free versions of all the videos I do, plus some Patreon exclusive content. For $10 a month, you can get entered into the CEO tier where I do a monthly giveaway of a guitar or like a huge prize package. So for a dollar or up to $10 a month, you could donate at my Patreon page. The links are down in the description. Number three, go buy a guitar. Guitarguts.com, I have the link at the top for guitars for sale and I have guitars, my kill switch pedal, Guitar Guts kill switches on there, all kinds of cool stuff up in the Guitar Guts store. So, if you want to help support and get something back, you can go buy something from there. Number four, go subscribe to my retro gaming channel. It's another YouTube channel where I do video game reviews and I go game hunting and I collect 80s and 90s memorabilia, Power Rangers, Pokemon, Ninja Turtles. I mean, you can see all these video game stuff that I have behind me. I love this stuff. So go follow me. My links are down in the description. There's also a second Instagram page that's linked up with it. If you guys were into all this old kind of stuff and you want to get back into it, send me a message and tell me what systems you're looking for. I can help you find one. I buy and flip systems all the time and I come across all kinds of stuff. So if you're looking for something or you want to get back into this stuff, let me know. I'll hook you up. And number five, if you want to support Guitar Guts and Trash to Thrash, be sure to be subscribed to this channel. Hit the like button on this video. Leave your comments down below. Even if it's just a one word comment, that's going to help me in the YouTube algorithm kind of move up and be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified every time a new video comes out. Now let's get back to the show. Now we'll start the journey of the second Les Paul. Again, this guitar was purely an experiment. I experimented on it by doing the airbrushing of the burst. And then there was another thing that I've been wanting to try for a while. I had heard if you apply your base coats and then apply some clear, then do your crackle that you'll get even bigger cracks than normal. There's something about adding the clear on that's gonna intensify the cracks. So that's why I'm spraying this guitar blue. It's actually a blue crackle. And it did crackle a little bit, but it did not turn out very cool. I'd be willing to try this experiment again. Maybe there were some other variables, temperature or something like that, but it didn't work out this time. I didn't get the results I was hoping for, and now this guitar has a ton of paint on it. All those base coats, all the airbrushing, and then all that crackle and the clear coat, so. I'll set that one aside for a month or so, let everything fully cure before I even try to sand that and experiment on it again. And luckily we don't have to wait that long to see what happens next. So it's been about a month, Ryan sanded the guitar back down, and now it's ready for another experiment. This time we're going to be doing some fluorescent crackle over a base coat of fiery orange. It's kind of a red-orange color. While painting a fluorescent guitar in the past, I learned that you have to use a base coat of a similar color under the fluorescent paint because fluorescent paint is somewhat transparent. So you need to have a solid base coat under it that's gonna enhance the fluorescent color. I also learned you better let that base coat dry for a few days at least before you put fluorescent paint over it because those two types of paint are not compatible. So it starts crackling but it's a really cool effect and it's not intended to do that. So now this has opened up some new crackle color options for me, like fluorescent orange or fluorescent green. And that's what we'll be doing on this guitar. We did the fiery orange base and we're gonna do fluorescent orange over the top of that for an orange on orange type of crackle. And keep in mind, this isn't crackle paint. This is Rust-Oleum's fluorescent paint. It's linked down below in the description. This paint is not intended to do a crackle effect. But since it's going on a different type of paint while the other stuff's still fresh, it just happens to do the same exact effect as a regular crackle paint would. For the painting schedule of this one, I use the exact same timing as I did for the other crackle guitar. With this one, I'm actually going to do a gloss clear coat. And that's going to be a little bit of an experiment as well, because I don't plan on level sanding it or polishing it. I'd wanted to do a crackle guitar with a high gloss clear coat that you could still feel the texture of the crackle on. That's the technique I eventually used on the Lizard LTD. On this guitar, I decided to go with black hardware. I felt like that would just look real metal, look awesome on there. And with that, we're gonna match the headstock logo to the hardware. For the clear coat on this guitar, I used my favorite clear coat, Spraymax High Glamour 2K in an aerosol can. This is my favorite clear coat because it's so easy to use and you don't have to clean anything up. When you're done, you just throw the can away. No mixing cups and two-part clear coats. 
everything's done in the can and it actually does mix them on the spot. You know, by experimenting on these two Les Pauls, I actually checked six experiments off my checklist. One of them started as one of my first crackle paint jobs. I got to try the Hellspawn's Burst, the Lizard's Crackle Texture, I got to try applying clear before crackle, the fluorescent crackle trick, and satin clear over crackle like I did on the Washburn Solar. After looking through my parts cabinet, I found I had two sets of EMG HZ passive pickups. And I thought that would be the perfect pickups to use in these two Les Pauls, so they match. And also since one of these sets of EMG HZs came from one of these guitars. On today's episode, we're not going to get into the details of electronics and assembly because I've showed that many times. And just last week, I showed how to install some EMGs on a Les Paul, which is exactly what these two guitars are. But I thought it was worth showing you guys that I had to re-drill the holes for the tuners up at the headstock. Someone had asked me about this on last week's Trash to Thrash, and my advice was always to use a drill press. Don't try to do it with a hand drill because it's pretty hard to get them perfectly straight. All right, guys, are you ready? <laughs> And here we have what looks like molten lava on the left and iced earth on the right. Both guitars are equipped with an Iron Age kill switch, EMG HZ pickups, all brand new hardware. The iced earth Les Paul has a white LED on its kill switch. The molten lava has an orange LED on its kill switch. This guitar resembles burnt earth with the texture of it. You can feel the cracks of the crackle, but it's got a crystal clear, really shiny clear coat. They really are quite the pair. These two guitars were given away to patrons, members of my CEO tier of my Patreon. I do giveaways like this every single month, so if you want to win something like this, be sure to go sign up to the CEO tier of my Patreon account. Link is down in the description below. The Burnt Earth Les Paul is on its way to Australia, and the Iced Earth Les Paul stayed here in the States. Speaking of giveaways, we got some things to give away here on the show today. The big prize package that I've been talking about for weeks on here with the EMG pickups, the Lundgren pickups, the Iron Age kill switches, the SoCal pedal boards, Alien Blood pedal board, and the FU Tone prize package. It's all going to one person and we're about to draw the winner right here on the show. I'll also be answering your questions on this week's Trash Talk. All right, guys, now it's time for Trash Talk, the segment where I go through the comments of the YouTube videos that I post and take your guys' questions and answer them here on the show. Before I start answering questions, though, we got some stuff to give away. As you guys know, I do giveaways pretty much every single month for either guitars or large prize packages. And today we're giving away this awesome prize package with a set of EMG 81 and 60 pickups, a Lundgren Heaven 77 pickup, an Iron Age kill switch with the Guitar Guts logo, a Guitar Guts kill boost pedal, an FU Tone prize package with noiseless springs and a 32 millimeter brass block, and a SoCal pedal board that I refinished in Alien Blood for you guys. So, we got the random number generator here. I've went ahead and I've compiled all the people from the YouTube comments, done a mini contest to choose a bunch of those people, and then I put them in with the list of people from my Patreon. And here we go, we're gonna use the random number generator to pick someone to win the prize package right now. So, the winner is number 78. And when we go down the list, wow. One of my longest running Patreon members, William Foster, man, congratulations. I believe he was one of the very first people who signed up to my Patreon page, and it has paid off, so. That is awesome. William, I'll contact you through Patreon. I'll send you an email. If you see this, make sure you check all your messages and contact me back. Now, let's jump into Trash Talk. Like I said, I'm gonna answer some of your guys' questions that you left over on my YouTube page. If you had any questions watching this week's episode or questions about your guitar builds, leave them down in the comments. I go through them every week, right before I do the show, and I grab a few of them to answer for you guys. 
So first question up, is it possible to put humbucker covers over hot rail pickups without affecting the sound? Honestly, I don't know. I know when you put covers over a humbucker, you can put ones that are flat over all the magnets, but I've never tried it over a rail. Honestly, rail pickups are a little bigger than some single coil pickups, so I don't know if the covers would even fit on the rails. But if anybody out there has experience and has tried this, let us know in the comments. If I get an answer, I'll be sure to let Tom know. Next question. Sir, I just wanted to ask, what is the ideal POTS for HSS configuration? Okay, that's interesting. So I'll stop right there because if you don't know, single coil pickups are supposed to use a 250K POT. Humbucker pickups use a 500K POT. You can switch them around if you want. Eddie Van Halen was known for using a 250K pot some, in some of his earlier guitars, and mainly it just changes your tone. But if you're going to do an HSX configuration, I would think about, if it was me, what pickups am I using the most? Am I using the single coils more or the humbucker? If it's pretty even, maybe you would want to put in two different volumes. One volume just for the neck and middle, one volume just for the bridge. So then you could have a 500K volume you know, for your bridge pickup and the humbucker, and then a 250k volume for the other two pickups that are single coil. Part two to his question, his bridge and middle combination is out of phase, which means it's got a very strange, different type of scooped tone. And the reason that must be happening is because one of those pickups must be wired backwards. If it's not happening when you're playing in the neck middle position, it might be your bridge pickup. Try switching your ground and your hot wire, and that's usually gonna fix that problem. Next question. What song were you playing in the demo? Sounds super sick. Uh, someone called it Riff Madness. Someone said they really liked the song for the Les Pauls. I appreciate that, guys. It's one of my original songs. I have a bunch of music over on Spotify. It's all progressive metal. If you want to hear that, check out the link in the description. I have a link down there to my Spotify page. All right, next question. Do you ever build left-handed guitars? I do. I'm actually finishing up a left-handed Frankenstrat right now for somebody. If you've been noticing in the background of this video, there's a left-handed Rhodes. I believe there's another lefty or two somewhere around here. But yeah, I do lefties. I just don't do demos on them because I can't play left-handed like Michelangelo. Next question. I have a guitar with 22 frets and a Floyd Rose. Is it possible to put a neck on with 24 frets or would I have to reroute the bridge cavity and all that crazy stuff? Unfortunately, yeah, you can't just switch the amount of frets on the neck because there's a specific dimension that your nut and your bridge need to be from each other. On most guitars, it's either 24 and three quarters of an inch or 25 and a half inch. That's called your scale length. If you add in a longer neck, your scale length's gonna be increased and it's not gonna work out. You're not gonna be able to intonate the guitar. So if you're gonna just swap your neck out, make sure that you buy one that has the same scale length because you know there's certain Jacksons, for example, the Fusion Jacksons, are short scale, they're 24 and three quarter inch, like a Les Paul, but most other Jacksons, like the Dinkies, and most of their performers, are 25 and a half inch, which is full size, like a Stratocaster. So those two scale lengths are not interchangeable. Warmoth actually makes necks that will convert. It's, they're called conversion necks, which is really cool, but you have to specifically be looking for a conversion neck if that's what you wanna do. If you wanted to modify a guitar and use a different fret you know, length neck on it, um, you could fill in the bridge, relocate the bridge, and you should be totally fine. I wouldn't recommend filling in the neck pocket and, and redrilling that. That's a little trickier because then your neck is going to sit further on board or further off the body. It's not going to really work right. The holes to mount it are going to have to be filled. I mean, that's a little bit messier. Either way, it's not an easy job. But yeah, you can't unfortunately just throw any neck on there that you want. All right, next question. You should try, instead of spraying a crackle, use your vinyl machine and make a decal of the black crackle. That way you always get the same crackle patterns. That sounds like a pretty cool idea, but to be honest, that would be very difficult to do. The vinyl, when it comes out of there, you have to hand cut all these little pieces out of it. It's called weeding. And then you have to be able to pull it off the paper. Hopefully it doesn't stick to itself. You have to be able to lay it flat. That sounds in theory like it would be a smart way to do it, but I think that'd be pretty tricky. Although, it might be worth a try just to see what happens. It got me thinking, you might be able to do the same kind of technique with that crystal pattern that was on that Charvel a few episodes back. So this could be a weird way to get some new interesting paint job styles by using the vinyl machine over the entire body. Alright, and now the final question of the week. 
I really don't understand why you let people who don't pay $10 a month get a chance to win your creations. That blue and purple is sick. Well, thank you. Um, the reason that I let anybody enter, I always give a free way to get into my contests, is it's actually a law. You can't just have laws that are exclusive to people who pay every month. You have to be able to have it open. You know, that's why they always say no purchase necessary. You hear that on commercials all the time, every giveaway. Blah, 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 no purchase necessary at the end. That's because there are rules and regulations that oversee the way people do contests and you have to have them random. You have to have them be real. You can't be uh, rigging these contests. That's illegal. So I'm not sure what the government agency is that oversees this stuff, but yeah, it's real and, and they want it to be fair for everybody. So the only way that I could even do a giveaway for my Patreon members would be to have some free way for people to enter the contests who aren't members of the Patreon. It's kind of crazy. All right, everybody, what do you think of those two Crackle Les Pauls? Let me know down in the comments which one was actually your favorite, and be sure to tune in next week because I'm going to be giving you guys the details on the next giveaway that I'm going to be doing that'll be set for March 15th. Thanks to everyone who participated in this last giveaway, and also thanks to the companies that donated to it. EMG, Lundgren, Iron Age Guitar Accessories, SoCal Pedal Boards, and FU Tone. I also want to thank James Ford, which you guys know from a recent episode of Trash to Thrash where I recently rebuilt his roads. He sent me this Jackson King V JS series, brand spanking new, it has the tags on it still, and he wants me to give it away. He had one stipulation though, that it has to go to a kid. So I want to hear your guys' ideas. How am I going to pick who this guitar is going to go to? Of course, I'm going to be repainting it, throwing a kill switch in it, upgrading it, doing a bunch of really cool stuff to it. But we need to find out some type of competition or a contest, some way to give this guitar away in an interesting way. So if you guys have ideas for that, leave them down in the comments and I'll check them out. If you want to order a custom guitar through me, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com. Everything I'm about to tell you is also listed down in the description below, all my contacts and links and all that stuff. If you want to buy one of the guitars I've already built, check out guitarguts.com. Right at the top, there's a link where it says guitars for sale. And you could also find my signature kill switch, my signature kill boost pedals, and there's a couple of guitars up there right now for sale. If you want to send your guitar in to get modded by me and be featured on the show, Send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com, and I'll get back to you within a week usually. I get a lot of emails every day, so please be patient. If you haven't seen all the episodes of Trash to Thrash yet, I strongly encourage you to go back and watch them all. Watch them two times. It helps a lot when people watch every single episode, leaving comments and liking them as you go. I'm adding a link down below to the playlist that has every episode. So if you want to watch all the episodes straight through or you want to click on that before you go to bed at night and let it just play through all night, that helps support the channel more than you guys know. Of course, you can go sign up to my Patreon page. There's a $1 option and a $10 option. And the $10 option gets you into my monthly giveaway automatically every single month. And also, please go subscribe to my retro gaming channel. Like I said, the links to all this stuff is down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next week. Rock on, my friends.